The Engine Who Stood Still Written and told by Back Off Track Halloween had came to the railway. The engines loved to see the autumn leaves coat the land and the Halloween joy in everyone's spirits. What they loved most of all was the scary stories. Whenever they could, the engines would gather around and tell their stories that time forgot. Usually, it was Edward who told these tales, and this night was no exception. Gordon backed down next to the other engines as they were gossiping among themselves if they had any stories to tell. Ha, you engines and your stories, or lack thereof. As if you have anything, said Thomas. And that's besides the point. How come you always flock to Edward whenever you want to hear one of your silly stories? Now, now, you know I don't mind, really, said Edward. <laughs> oh, uh, please, Edward, do you, do you have a story? Well, I suppose I do. Oh, please tell it, Edward, said Percy, jumping in. <laughs> yes, let's hear this, shall we? <laughs> All right. A long time ago, an engine worked coal drags on the other railroad. He had a number. It was 2393. It was a very hard-working engine and liked to keep moving. Standing still sometimes seemed like a chore for him. One late night, he had a coal train on the main line. As soon as he rounded a bend, one of his lamps flickered and cut out. His crew... Noticing the change in light brought him to a standstill. Must have been a faulty lamp, said his driver. Yeah, there's a station not far up the line, said his fireman. I can walk up and see if they have a spare so we can continue. All right, I'll go explain the situation to the guard. All right, d don't be long, please, stammered the engine. His crew went their separate ways and the engine was left alone. A little while later, the driver and guard were chatting in the brake van like old friends. And then I said, how was I supposed to know? The guard was cut off by the sound of the door opening and the fireman entering the brake van with a lamp in his hand looking very confused and flustered. What game do you think you're playing, driver? The driver was puzzled. Nothing at all, what's up with you? what you do with our engine? The fireman said between heavy breaths. N nothing I've been in the guard's van since you've left. The fireman looked perplexed. Then where the devils is our engine? The three railway men walked up to the front of the train where the engine was supposed to be. See, he's not here. Well, now how is that possible? The railway staff searched heavily around the surrounding area for any hints and clues, but nothing at all. The engine seemingly stopped existing when no one was looking. Some say the engine was taken by thieves, made for scrap. Others say 2393 simply left on his own to keep himself busy, stealing other jobs from other hard-working engines, just so he doesn't have to stand still. The engines stirred to themselves in their shed. Pah! What rubbish! An engine can't leave on his own. I left on my own on multiple occasions. They didn't end well, but I still did, said Thomas cheekily. Proper engines don't leave on their own. Pah! You never know, Gordon. Lots of strange things happen. Well, whatever strange happenings want to happen, it can happen away from me. The engines, unsure exactly what Gordon had meant, went their separate ways as they slowly drifted off to sleep. The next day, Gordon was in a bad mood. Passengers were consistently late for his train. They had honestly perplexed Gordon how late some of the passengers were being. By the time he was on his final express trip for the day, it was very dark indeed. Silly stories of late passengers, whatever next. Unfortunately for Gordon, he'd find out soon enough. When he was close to his last stop of the day, 
They had to stop at a red signal, which they never usually had to do. But considering how late the train was, it didn't surprise his crew or himself that much. While he waited, his eyes drifted off to his surroundings. It's a dark forest with his lamp just barely illuminating not much farther in front of him. In fact, he could barely make out the tree outline. But as he looked, he noticed a silhouette. It looked like an engine that didn't have any lamps on, not even for a light engine. Gordon thought he was seeing things, but as he looked at it more, he could barely make out what was on its tender and cab, and only just enough to be able to see what was on its buffer beam. Just about as the signal was about to turn green, it hit Gordon who exactly he was looking at. With the drop of the signal, Gordon hollered at the top of his lungs unexpectedly. It's 2393, he's come to take my train. He started off roughly, catching his crew off guard. Whoa, Gordon, easy. Stay away, stay away from me. Gordon, calm down. As Gordon jolted away from the signal, he could feel the engine looking at him leave. By the time Gordon had reached the big station, he had calmed himself down, and began to think about what the encounter was. By the time he had reached his sheds, he had concluded that he really did see things, as he wouldn't want to admit that a proper engine like himself ran away on his own, let alone from the engine who stood still. However, if you were able to talk to him about it, he could swear that 2393 still sits in the darkness for a job to pass him by, but he never finds one.